great to see each and every one of you here as we gather to worship and praise God. We're glad you're here today. I'm telling you, I hope you had a great week. Great week. Got a couple announcements to share with you, and then we'll go on with our time of worship today. First of all, tickets, tickets, porta pits, chicken dinners, okay? Your ticket's free. All you need to do is go right back there at the back of the table. We got Kathy and Kelly and Haley back there. Uh, they're, they're giving out tickets. The reason we need you to get a ticket is so that we know how many meals to fix, okay? So now, get your ticket. Pardon get me? your ticket. Get your ticket. Get your ticket. Get your ticket. Get your ticket. Okay, now, folks, this is a thank you. This is a thank you. I want to thank you for your, your, your dedication, for your commitment uh, to being a part of Salem United Methodist Church because it is because of your dedication and your commitment that we came through 2020 in excellent shape as a church, and that's wonderful, okay? Uh, financial, that's what I'm talking about. And in order to say thank you, we're doing the porta pit and it's a free ticket, a free meal. Can't beat that. Now, we also want to say thank you to our community, okay? And here's the way we're doing that. If you would like, if you would like to purchase a ticket, it's $6.49 a ticket. Just the cost of having the, uh, the barbecue or the chicken and the uh, cooked, okay? That's all it costs. And you can give back. You can buy one ticket. You can buy 50 tickets. And you can buy zero tickets, okay? Whatever you feel led to do. Now, you can go by the grocery store and that young lady or young man that's uh, checking your groceries out, and you can say, hey, Salem United Methodist Church wants to say thank you. Give them a ticket. Maybe you go by the doctor's office and you stop there at the, at the, at the counter and the lady a ticket and say, hey, Salem United Methodist Church wants to say thank you. Thank you. Maybe there's somebody else in your family or friends that you just want to reach out and say thank you to. That's a great way to do it and also introduce them to our church, okay? Great opportunity. Okay, that's going to be April the 23rd. Now, the 24th, we are having a um, yard sale, okay? So here's where you can help out. Uh, this past Friday, Beth and I slipped off to Denton, North Carolina. Anybody know where Denton, North Carolina is? Yeah, we went to the antique uh, show uh, where they said one person's uh, trash. trash is another's treasure. Okay? Now, we look at a lot of treasure, okay? But that's what we're going to have a yard sale. If you have something you say, well, I'm not using it any longer, but it might be worth a little something, see Drew Neal and bring it and let the youth put it out for the yard sale on April the 24th, and they're going to sell it. The money that they raise for the 24th is going to support their mission trip to Alaska in June, and it'll also help out in their trip to uh, uh, the Carolina Cross Connection in July, okay? So uh, come out and support that and be a part of that, okay? Those are the two announcements that I have. Uh, I'm going to open us with prayer, and I'm going to turn it over to Kelly, okay? All right, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we have together, here together uh, as a family. And we thank you that your, your presence is with us as we begin to worship you, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that all that we say and all that we do may bring glory and honor and praise to you. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, let's stand up and sing. Amen. Y'all ready to worship? So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. So we
This week I found, found, think, I found something that made me think about God like all the time. And I just wanted to share, share that with you. Anybody, has anybody watched the series The Chosen? Oh my gosh, y'all. Y'all need, need to look it up. It, they, they downloaded all the episodes on, um, on YouTube so you can find it there for free. There's a Chosen app. Um, the Chosen app, and you can watch it, and it, you can push it to your TV and everything. It will, it will, the Holy Spirit is in every single episode. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I wanted to share that with you because I, I binged it last week after Easter, and it was so powerful. I, I think I was in tears, and every single episode there was a spot where I was like, my goodness, I never thought about it that way. And it's all about how Jesus called his disciples and who they were, who they really were. We can read through Matthew and really not grasp that. Now when I read Matthew, I know where he's coming from. I understand. So I just want to um, 
I just want to encourage you in that before we start another song. It has nothing to do with worship. I guess it does have something to do with worship because it, it's your worship throughout the week. Our worship to him is to be thinking about him all the time. Amen. And, and to wrap him into your life all the time. It isn't just like we come to church and that's all we have to think about God. It's all, it's all the time. And, and that's the way I want to be. Our flesh pulls us away and our spirit has to pull us closer. So let's continue to worship and make him our center. Amen. Amen. Check out The Chosen. It's awesome. Jesus, the battle does belong to you. We just thank you and praise you. God, thank you that you're 
you inhabit the praises of your people. And as we lift up our voices and lift up our hearts and lift up our souls to focus in on you, you're here. And I just thank you. Because without your presence, this is nothing. We're just ganging, uh, clanging gongs and it's nothing. So thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being for us. And Lord, as we continue to worship with our tithes and our offerings, I pray that you would take it and bless it and multiply it and use it to further your kingdom. And pray for wisdom, Lord, for our leadership making decisions for the direction of the church. And we pray that you would use us. Let this be a lighthouse in this community. Lord, we love you. We praise you. It's in your holy name we pray. Let your spirit rain down, let your spirit fall down, let your spirit rain down on me. Let your glory rain down, let your glory fall down, let your glory rain down on me. Let the fire presence burn within my soul, purify my heart and make my spirit whole. Your light shines bright for the world to see as the fire of your presence burns inside of Let your power rain down, let your power fall down, let your power rain down on me, let your fire rain down, let your fire fall down, let your fire rain down on me. our desires to be changed and new and our flesh gets in the way sometimes so I pray that you would give us strength in the spirit and as we move into a time of just learning from your word we pray that you would bless us put your anointing on our pastor 
Let him speak only what you would have him speak. Let your spirit rain down. Let your spirit fall down. And we love you. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, praise band. And good morning again. Good to see you here today. You know, last Sunday we celebrated Easter, of course, and the resurrection. And what we discovered was that the uh, in the beginning that the women who went to the tomb and, and also the disciples, they didn't go to the tomb looking for a resurrected Savior. But they went to the tomb looking for a dead body. And it wasn't until later that evening that we discovered that the resurrection actually became real to them, to the disciples. As Jesus comes to them, as they're gathered behind locked doors, they're gathered behind locked doors in, in, in fear of the Jews when Jesus comes to them. Now that fear comes to an end when Jesus shows himself to them and, and he says, look at my hands and look at my side. And, and then suddenly the sorrow turns to joy and, and they begin to praise the Lord. But the scripture says, but Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, uh, was not with them when Jesus came. Now it appears for some reason, for whatever reason, Thomas is not with the others when Jesus comes before him. Thomas doesn't experience Jesus on Resurrection Sunday, on that first Easter. What we must remember that these men, they were locked behind closed doors in fear of the Jews. Okay? And unlike today, they didn't have DoorDash to call and have something delivered to the room. They had to go to the marketplace. If you've been in other countries, you know what a market looks like, a fresh air market. Not much like it does in our country. But they had to go there to purchase food. And uh, they really didn't have a way to preserve the food. So that meant they would have to go out multiple times to, to get food. So just maybe, maybe they said, well, which one's going to go out? Which one's going to take that chance to, to leave this room and, and go out there where the, the Pharisees are looking for them and, and, and purchase some food. And so I expect maybe they draw, drew straws. You ever done that before? Thomas, maybe he got the short straw and he was sent out. It'd probably be better that one gets arrested than the whole bunch, right? Or maybe, maybe, maybe Thomas, maybe Thomas just had to get out of that room. I mean, think about what the room was before Jesus Came into that room, it was filled full of grief, sadness. I mean, somebody had robbed the body, stolen the body, they didn't know where it was at, so they locked the doors in fear. And, and Thomas just said, you know, I, I've just got to get out of here. I, I've got to be alone. You ever felt that way? I had to sort through some things. I felt that way when my father passed away. I, I said, you know, I, I just got to get away. I've got to be by myself a little bit. Spend some time with me. Maybe that's how Thomas felt. I don't know. Maybe that's why he was gone. Or maybe Thomas was just walking around thinking about that time, you know, that Jesus was with the disciples and he told them that, that he's going to leave them. And he said, now listen, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And uh, I'm going to have to go away. And, and Thomas's reply was this. He said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus said, well, I'm the way and the truth and the life. And, and maybe that, that phrase right there, Thomas was just walking around, shaking his head, trying to, trying to put it all together. So maybe while the others encountered the risen Savior, Thomas was away lost in his own grief, struggling with his own thoughts, trying to, to, to make some sense or trying to understand just what Jesus meant. Whatever Thomas was doing, you know, it, it didn't keep him away, did it? Something drew him back. So he comes back, and so the other disciples, they told him, they said, we've seen the Lord. Okay? Now, now, now picture that for just a minute, because when Thomas left that room, for whatever reason, I expect the scene was a lot different when he returned. 
You see, Thomas, he left the room. He, he left a group of, uh, of grieving men. They were grieving over the loss of someone that they loved, someone that they had spent the last three years of their life with, someone who they had listened to his teachings, and, and, and they listened as someone who taught with authority. They, they, they had witnessed these miraculous healings of Jesus. And each day, each day, day by day, as they followed Jesus and, and they listened to him and they sat at his feet, their faith became stronger and stronger and stronger, and suddenly it just crashed. And they were lost. Now, you've been in one of those rooms before. You've been there gathered with family and friends, grieving over the loss of loved ones. Now, I, I know it is in those times that I like to share memories. Memories of good times, past times. And I can imagine the disciples, what they were doing before they experienced Jesus, uh, they were sitting around and, and they were talking and, and they looked at one another and said, Hey, Peter, do you, Peter, do you remember that time that you walked on water? You remember that, don't you, Peter? We was there in the boat late at night, and we thought there was a ghost coming to us, and it was Jesus. And you called out, Lord, if it's you, let me, let me come and greet you. And, and you stepped out of that boat, and you began walking on. Remember that, Peter? And, and you remember, Peter, that when you took your eyes off Jesus, suddenly you noticed the wind and the waves. And, and remember, Peter, you began to sink. And you cried out, Lord, save me. And, and Peter, do you remember that he just reached out and took you by the hand and, and just pulled you out of that water? Do you remember that? Oh, Lord, I, I wish he was here today to pull us out of this grief that we're dealing with, this pain that we're, we've got. I, I wish he was here. Remember that time? You remember that time when we were crossing the sea and, and, and that storm came up? And, and, and we thought we were going to drown. We thought we were going to perish. And we looked around, and there was Jesus. Jesus was asleep. And, and we finally, we couldn't stand it any longer. We cried out and said, do you not even care that we're drowning? That we're about to perish? And you remember what he did? You remember he got up out of that boat, and he stood out, and, and suddenly he spoke, and the, and the waves calmed, and the, and the winds died, and there was silence. I wish Jesus was here to to calm my aching heart or to calm those waves of sadness. Do you remember the time? Do you remember the time that Mary and Martha they called to us and they said that their brother Lazarus was sick? And 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 we told you said we better get up and we better go to him. And, and you said no, not now. And we tried to urge Jesus to go ahead, but he didn't. He held back and then. Then we finally got there, and we met my Martha, and, and Martha was saying, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. And, and, and then there was Mary, and Mary come, and, and, and she said, Lord, if you'd only been here. Did you remember that he wept? And, and do you remember that he, he went to the tomb? Now, now, remember, Lazarus had been dead for four days. <laughs> Martha said, Lord, he stinks. And said, Jesus cried out and said, Lazarus, come out of that tomb. <laughs> hey, remember that? And, and know what? Lazarus come out of the tomb. <laughs> you remember the expression on the faces of those grievers <laughs> who saw him and unbind him, let him free. Remember that? See, they were sharing memories. Remember the time that the, he went to the temple? <laughs> and boy, he, he made such a scene. Remember that? He, he drove out those money changers and then he turned over the tables. Boy, did you see the look on the Pharisees and the, and the priest's face? Yeah, I just wish he was here. Well, that's what we do, isn't it? When we gather together in, in, in our grief and in our sorrow, we remember and we share memories, memories of, of past times, times that we spent together. And it's those memories that, that, that keep us close, and they bring us comfort in our time of grief. 
Now, I expect that that is exactly what Thomas was expecting he was going to return to. That's what he left. They were sharing those memories, and I expected that's exactly what he figured that he would return to. But instead, something was different. Well, well they told him, they said, we've seen the Lord. Suddenly, the, the, the look on their faces was not one of grief, but a, of joy. Suddenly, suddenly there, was, there was smiles and joy, and I can't explain it, but Thomas, you're not going to believe this. Thomas, we've seen the Lord. But look what Thomas says. Thomas says, unless I see the mark and of the nails in his hands, and unless I can put my finger in, in, in those marks of those nails, and, and unless I can reach out and, and, and put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. No doubt that's where he got his nickname. We know it, don't we? Doubting Thomas what was called him for years and years. Unless I see for myself, I'm not about to believe you guys. Now again, we really don't know why Thomas was not there when Jesus appeared that first time, but whatever reason that kept him away, I, I expect that, that the week from the time that, that he came back to that room and, and, and they told him uh, that they'd seen the Lord until the, this next week, I expect that whole week he suffered emotional and spiritual struggle. They say they saw him. Why, why can't I feel it? Why can't I experience what they have? Why do I there's not no joy in my life? Why there's no happiness? I don't understand. And while his faith may have been weak, it led him back to his spiritual family. Now, before we go judging Thomas, ask yourself, have you ever had doubts? Yes, you have. If you're alive and breathing, you've had doubts. I've had doubts. I mean, Jesus says, do not worry. But how many times ha have we made ourselves sick over, over worrying about bills and family and health and everything else? And Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry about anything because your father knows your needs and he's going to take care of you. But yet we doubt, don't we? Well, how often have we challenged that, Lord, if you are real, how about doing this? If you are real, get me out of this mess I got myself in. Help me out here. I prayed and asked God to deliver me. And it hadn't worked. Show yourself so that I know that you're real. Yeah, we've all been in that struggle. So let's not get be so hard on, on Thomas this morning. But there's a couple lessons that we can learn from this, this first part of this scripture lesson. And, and we'll go over them right quick before we continue. And one is that no matter how strong or weak our faith is, the surest place to maintain our faith is in the company of of like believers yeah we need each other I need you to encourage me and I need to encourage you we need each other and I, I, I need you to pray for me and I need to pray for you And the second thing is very similar in, in that we need each other is that we are a family. We are family. And, and as a family, when, when one of our brothers or sisters are struggling with their faith or, or whatever they're struggling with, we should be there. We should be there to encourage them. We should be there with them. And we should also be sharing our faith with them. Telling our story. The scripture says that a week later, his disciples, they were again in the house. And, and this time Thomas was with them. Okay, And the scripture says that although the doors were shut, Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. Okay, now, now, now 
before we go too much further, what I want you to note is that the first time that Jesus comes to them, in the evening of the first uh, day of the week, okay, it says that the door is locked. They're behind locked doors in fear, okay? Then a week later, Jesus returns, but this time the door is shut, but it does nothing about being locked, okay? And, and that's very significant because what it shows us is the disciples, their encounter with Jesus, Jesus becomes real to them, and in doing so, they are no longer locked away in fear, okay? Now, hear what I'm saying. The world did not change, okay? I said that last week. The world did not change, okay? The outside world, those Jews were still out to get the disciples, okay? They wanted to have them arrested and put away. They wanted them silenced. They wanted to end this Jesus movement, okay? They wanted to put an end to it, okay? They even go as far a little bit later in passing a law that says that it is blasphemy to, to, to utter the name of Jesus in public, okay? So that's why, if you remember, remember Saul, the story of Saul, the, Steve, the stoning of Stephen, that's what that's all about, okay? That's what it's all about. So the world did not change. The, ter the world was still as evil and corrupt and bad, and, and there was suffering and there was pain and death. Outside that room, the world was changed, okay? But what changed was them. They are the ones that changed, okay? You see, their fear was gone because Jesus lives. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Remember that song? That is, at least for everyone except Thomas. He's still gripped in his fear, his doubt. And he's still struggling with his faith. And Jesus appears. Now, I'm sure that he recognized that for others, the others, the other ten, something's made a difference in their lives. When he left them, they were sad. When he came back, they were joy. Some, they, they're, living, they're living their life completely different. I understand that, but I don't have what they have. That's what Thomas was saying. I don't feel all what they feel. I don't have that peace that they have. Something is missing because Thomas has yet to experience that difference for his life. He's yet to experience a risen Savior. Now notice also the words of Jesus when he comes to him. He says, peace be with you. Those are the same words that he had uttered the first time that he met him. When he came to him, he said, peace be with you. Now think about this. Have you ever been in a crowd when somebody walked in and immediately the atmosphere changed? Yeah. It happens to me quite a bit. Especially if, if they know I'm a preacher. They'll walk in and say, oh, <laughs> watch your language, the preacher's coming. Watch what you're doing, the preacher's here. And you know what I tell them? You don't have to worry about me. Okay? I am not your judge. You won't stand before me. Okay? I'm just a preacher. But yeah, have you, have you ever noticed, so somebody walks into that app, well, that may not really compare to this situation, but for me, when things get difficult, and, and, and while I know that, that, that I, should, I should turn to, to God first, okay, and I know that, I have to admit to you that I don't always do that, okay? Too often, what I try to do is, is take control of things on my own. I'm going to take care of this. I got this. That is until I've made so big a mess of things and I'm drowning in my mess and I have to cry out, Lord, save me. Save me. And, and, and that's when I discover is that he shows up. He shows up. Jesus is there. He enters that door that I've locked up tight out of fear, and he opens the door that I've, I've shut, and he comes to me, and he says, Eric, peace be with you. 
my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And then suddenly, suddenly, I, I can't explain it, but suddenly I, I begin to realize that I don't have to carry this weight by myself. In fact, I don't even have to carry this weight at all. I can turn it over to him. And all of a sudden, that weight that's, 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 that's been on my shoulders, that's been got me bent over, my back aching, my tire, legs tired, suddenly, <laughs> it's been gone. It's gone. It's gone. It goes away. Now, now, now look what Jesus says to Thomas. Then he said to Thomas, Teacher Thomas, listen to me, buddy. Put your, put your finger right here. I want you to feel where they drove those spokes in by hand. Thomas, listen to me, Thomas. Thomas, I want you to take your hand. I want you to take your hand, and I want you to reach out, and I want you to touch that side where they, where they pierced me with that sword. Thomas, listen to me, Thomas. Do not doubt, but believe. Man, those are, those are powerful words. Powerful words. Listen, Thomas. Thomas, I know, I know you have doubt. Thomas, I know you have fear. Thomas, I know you, you're struggling right now. I understand your doubt. I understand your struggles. But Thomas, listen to me. I want you to know that I'm real to you. I'm real to you. Thomas, I want you to know. I want you to believe. I want you to believe. You know, early in Jesus' ministry, he, he and the disciples, they, Jesus tells them a parable. And that parable can be found in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew the 18th chapter. And it goes like it says, What do you think that if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and he goes in search for the one who has gone astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that ever went astray. And he goes on, he says, So it is, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Wow. Why'd you share that with me, preacher? Well, think about that. Think about Thomas. Thomas was that lost sheep. You see, the others had been gathered down in the room. And, and Thomas had wandered off in his grief and his pain, his sorrow, his struggles. He did not know what the future would look like. He, he was lost. He, he didn't know which way to turn or, or which way to go or, or what to do. Oh, sure, he returned. But listen to me. Listen to me. You can be lost and still be in a crowd. Yeah. Yeah. You ever felt alone? Even though you were surrounded. Listen, I, I can't tell you how many services that I have done where someone has taken their life. They were lost even though they were in a crowd. They couldn't see the light. But look, look, Jesus, the good shepherd, he sought Thomas out. He came back. He didn't have to come back. I mean, he'd revealed himself to the other ten. He didn't have to come back, but he did. He come back. He sought Thomas out. He made a point of telling Thomas, Thomas, look here, buddy. Touch my hand. Look here, Thomas. Reach in. Feel my side. Thomas, listen to me, Thomas. Thomas, I don't want you to doubt. Thomas, I want you to believe. Those aren't just empty words that Jesus told. I, I, I don't know. Uh, he told the story of the good shepherd. He went out and found that one lost sheep. Now listen, praise God. Because that's my story. You see, I was lost. I had wandered away. 
I decided, you know, the church has done too much harm, caused much, too much pain, too much hurt. If he's real, he would show himself to me, so he must not be real. I don't need this. I don't need this. And when I struggled, and when I had doubts, and guess what? There's even times in my life, even today, that I tend to wander away. You know, Jesus says that we are sheep. And you know anything about sheep? You know how sheep graze? Sheep graze with their head down. They don't look up. They graze with their head down, and they just keep grazing until they walk off that cliff. Yeah. That's who we are. We tend to wander, but praise be to God, the good shepherd knows that. And he keeps looking for us, and he says, listen to me, don't doubt. Believe. I'm coming looking for you. Touch my hand. Feel my side. Know that I'm real. Eric, I want you to believe. I want you to believe that I'm the way. I'm the way. Follow me. Follow me. Keep your eyes on me. Focus on me, and I'll lead you the way you need to go. Listen to me. I'm the truth. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'll tell you the truth. I've never told you a lie. Listen to me. And then he says, listen to me. I don't know what you're struggling with, but I am the light. You don't have to fear your struggles, your pain, your suffering, and even death. Because I am the light. Yes. Now, I don't know, I don't know if that parable was running through Thomas's mind or not, but, but it gives me hope. It connects for me the dots together of the good shepherd. But here's what Thomas said. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. But he didn't say it like that. No, no. I, I think Thomas got that. My Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? And he goes on and he says, well, well blessed are those who have not seen me and you have come to believe. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, he touched me and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met my blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout his while eternity rolls. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Yes, Thomas. Thomas became a changed man that day. Jesus leaves Thomas and he leaves the others with a question that, that each of us I have to answer for ourselves. Do you believe because you have seen me? Does he have to reveal himself for you to believe? Or you do you believe because I say so? Folks, I, I, I can't explain how Jesus could calm the storms in your life. I can't, I can't explain that. I can't tell you how you can experience this peace uh, in the midst of the struggles that you have to face. I can't explain that. I cannot uh, explain just how how Christ is real in my life. 
I can't explain that to you. But all I know is that when I'm standing in need, and when I don't know which way to turn, and when I'm weak, his words ring clear, and he says, peace be with you. He says, I got this. He says, follow me. He says, let me help you with that burden. He says, come to me, all who are weary and are carrying a heavy burden. And he says, I'll give you rest. That's what he promises. Now listen to me. The prophet Malachi, he's prophesying for God. and, And God says, listen to me. He says, put me to the test. Go look it up and see if that's not what it says. And you know what Jesus says? John records the words as this. He says, do not doubt, but believe, believe. Now think about that. Think about all that the world has to offer to you. And then think about this. Think about what Christ has to give you. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy. That floods my soul. Something happened. And now, yes, now I know. He touched me. And he made me whole. That's what he has to offer to you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious, loving God, we thank you for this time that we've had to share together. Lord, I thank you for Thomas, who was faithful in, in, in his life, Lord, that when he doubted, he recognized that he was doubting. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who said, I'm not going to leave that one behind. And that one was me. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you for that touch. May your spirit fall upon us and be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now let's close with some worship. Let's all stand and worship. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow.
peace be with you. Amen.